Hey everybody, welcome to Adam Makes Beer and today we're doing what we're going to call a short pour. A short pour is going to kind of be like a lower quality editing video where I'm looking to answer kind of one big question, show you what I do and kind of take it from there. I'm hoping to post more of these a week rather than the well edited stuff that my awesome editor Andy does. Anyways, today we are going to be talking about harvesting yeast. I did a video on, on yeast harvesting on Instagram. If you're interested in following me on Instagram, I do like one, one minute reels, real short stuff, just quick explanation things. And I did a re reel there on yeast harvesting and it went over, it's one, it's one of my highest watched reels. So I thought I would do a little bit, a little bit longer clip on it and, and give you the ins and outs of it. First of all, this is one way to do this process, all right? I'm not flawless, this process isn't flawless. I try to do it as tight as I can. Currently, we're not using a scope. We're looking to be growing into that. So I know there's different, potentially better ways to do things, but this is where my brewery is at right now as far as our practice goes. And I feel as if it's pretty sound with where we're at technology-wise. All that said, we are harvesting yeast. And the big idea behind harvesting yeast is obviously making your yeast go further, potentially more robust fermentations, money savings, everything like that. What you'll see right here is you see my brink over here and this line that runs around to the bottom of this tank right over there. What I'm doing is off FV1, Fermenter 1 right here, I'm going to harvest an awesome yeast strain that we get from Imperial called Juice. And we typically do our IPAs with that. And today I'm actually harvesting it for what I'm really going to view as like a grower batch of Hollow Point. Hollow Point is a blonde ale for, for us that later will get a whole bunch of hibiscus in the bright tank. So in the fermenter, it's really just a blonde ale. So it's a great, it's a great beer to be growing up yeast with and maintaining a strain in house. What we want to be doing with this whole process, number one, is making sure that everything is sanitary. We pack a brink, this keg right here with sanitizer for the appropriate amount of time. This yeast line that is connected from there to there was part of my CIP cycle earlier on sanitizing the fermenter that I use today. We make sure that we hit every port with ISO, 70% ISO for, san uh, for sanitizing purposes. That's kind of how we do it, okay? We connect everything up and what we're gonna be doing is, is I already have yeast bled through this line right here, you can see that I have a little side kickoff where I will bleed off yeast down the drain into a bucket. Typically what I like to do is I like to take the first three to five gallons off the bottom of the cone. I'm using a, I'm on a 15 barrel system here and especially with this juice strain, I feel like I really need to get as much of the bottom of the cone out as I can so I can get that kind of middle of the cone, a little bit of the top of the cone because this strain tends to leave a little bit of haze and that's kind of one of the things that we want to maintain when we do that. So what we do is we have everything sanitized. I have CO2 head pressure on the fermenter which is going to help gently push this yeast into the brink. I typically put five to 10 PSI on the tank depending on how on how sticky that yeast cake is and how much pressure I need in order to get that out. Most of the yeast we use in house is from Imperial and I use a lot of times juice and a lager strain called Harvest from them. I find ironically that they harvest in a similar fashion. Some yeast strains are more powdery, some are more clumpy, more flocculent. I find the texture of them fairly similar. This is not like a really powdery, really thin strain that you'll see pushing through. This one has a little more substance to it. It's, that makes it a little bit easier to understand kind of what you're looking at when you handle some yeast strains that behave in a similar way. What I like to do is I like to harvest 2.2 pounds per barrel of wort going into a standard strength uh, wort or beer as far for an ale, and I like to do 4.4 pounds for a lager. Today, I'm harvesting for an ale, so I'm just gonna be doing 2.2 pounds. Typically, I use this yeast same day. I don't like to keep it locked up and stored in here. 
you definitely can for up to a few days. If you do, make sure to blow pressure off the top of the brink. You don't want that yeast under a lot of pressure. I personally think that it is better to use that sooner than later though. Once I have harvested the yeast, I will take my runoff line from the heat exchanger, so to where the cool wort is gonna be coming out from, uh, from the heat exchanger, and I will hook it up to the top of the brink right here, and that will drop wort in down through and push this yeast out back into the fermenter that I'm going into. That's kind of in a nutshell how I'm handling yeast harvesting. It's potentially better than just going cone to cone, just kind of moving yeast in from one tank to another. You can be a little bit more specific with it. Even though I know harvesting by, by weight isn't perfect, it's better than nothing. As always, if there's anything that you see that you have a question about what I'm doing, or if you happen to do it another way, please leave questions in the comments. If you find value in any of this content, please give it a thumbs up and let me know if you think that this kind of single shot, not super highly edited thing will work well for the channel. Anyways, we really appreciate it and we'll talk to you later. Bye.